Today I'm going to be stripping the internals from this Lucas RB310 uh, voltage regulator in uh, preparation for fitting a solid state uh, modern example using the original case so it will look uh, old as it was you won't be able to tell the difference from the outside but the modern electronics will give much more consistent charging so it's just a case of dismantling the unit and being as unobtrusive as possible in the dismantling process and by that I mean I'm going to keep it as intact as possible uh, which is pretty easy to do on these uh, you've got three bobbins there uh, this is the cutout here and these uh, perform the separate functions of current and voltage regulation uh, these were the adjusting screws to regulate the charge um, that was the cutout there with with its contacts so it's pretty it's pretty straightforward uh, unit which also means it's quite simple to dismantle so that's the main job for today to strip everything out of here uh, whilst retaining these contacts for the existing wiring I'll retain these terminals and then I shall be able to fit the modern uh, solid state regulator. So the first job is to remove these uh, these wires which are bonded to the uh, to the frame. So let's give that a go. I've got a, a soldering iron here, and I am hoping they will yield with a bit of heat applied. Hopefully that shouldn't take much at all. going to try and prise that off there if this fails will have to be cut off just give that a moment that's one of them swap hands over now took that out of the way so it doesn't get damaged by the iron so I've just got the screwdriver under there just to carefully prise it away once it's hot enough should be able to feel it give in soon oh well there we go It's it has left a, a little bit on there I'm not sure how they were attached at the factory. It certainly wasn't by solder. Just switch the iron off now. Okay, so with those out of the way, and I am uh, doing my best to retain all these, if only for, for spurs. Uh, because I can't see myself ever using this again. I mean, I've got a, f a couple of examples and this is has been the worst and most inconsistent and unreliable of the bunch. That's why I've chosen it to strip down. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't ever, uh, I wouldn't ever gut a, a proper working example. So the next step is to loosen these three nuts which secure the bobbins. Oh, actually, in fact, before I do that, there's the small matter of this link which needs removing. Now that, I believe, is a resistor. It's some sort of resistive link which uh, links the F and D terminals. Now, with the solid state regulator, there's no need for this, and in fact, it has to come out because retaining it would interfere with the uh, the operation of the modern one so most of my videos in fact all of them are largely unedited so what you're seeing here is completely unscripted 
although I have of course examined this thoroughly beforehand to decide on the best course of action now we should be able to there we go just take that out of the way like that so that was our little link bit of a, a funny looking thing really some sort of fiber or fabric with wound with um, wound with wire I should really measure the resistance to that just out of interest but you see I've just got another example here of uh, you know a similar similar regulator and that has uh, you know a solid resistor on the back so they did there were very many different types it just depends on what vehicle we were fitted to um, you know the charging system the demands the demands on the uh, charging system etc for different vehicles so the next job is just to slacken all these off one by one and then when they're slackened off just set about removing them carefully and that is uh, 2BA or at least 2BA spanner fits and that's a, a really nice size to work in uh, British Association I do enjoy working in that size and the vast majority of uh, electrical equipment and instrument manufacturers at the time that's what they used because they were they were very uh, very handy little sizes so we'll just remove them like so put them into a pile there now you'll see with those nuts removed it should then just be a simple matter of lifting this entire lot you'll see the, the cut out and uh, this bobbin here uh, are linked well as it, they are linked actually well, of course they are so if we just carefully lift these away because I want to try and retain this this uh, fiber board intact and there we go out it comes so that's the gubbins gone as simple as that so I'll be putting them aside they won't be going in the bin now this uh, the cutout uh, well one part of the cutout contact that is also redundant uh, I could I suppose leave it in situ but thinking about it I do want to terminate uh, one of the wires for the uh, new solid state unit so what I'm going to do is I think I shall drill this out drill these rivets out and then I can secure it with the uh, little screws to take the uh, to take the ring crimps which is what I'm planning to do here because of course I need to use these uh, for the existing wiring so that's that it was really as easy as that I'll show you now what's going in this uh, empty case now and this is exactly how it came to me I got the solid state regulator there and these two two little uh, nuts and screws to secure it and that is literally all you get and this is the the type I ordered now the chap uh, who makes these and sells them was very helpful I spoke to him on the phone uh, stated my requirements and this is the one he recommended for me uh, 12 volts 22 amps that is because uh, my dynamo on the Humber is has a maximum output of about 30 amps I think it is and it's negative earth because my car has been converted in the past 
Um, so yeah, that's the website, electrodynamicsolutions.com. And this is just how it arrived. So I've got three wires here, uh, sorry, four wires, uh, black ones to earth. These three are to um, the various connections. It's all pretty self-explanatory. Brown wire goes to bat, which is B, yellow to D here, green to the field terminal, F, and black to earth. So what I'm going to do is uh, fit it in here, and I will, I will remove that because it is in the way and it's completely redundant. So I can fit that inside there, and then with the cover on top of it, nobody will be able to tell the difference. So to all intents and purposes, it looks exactly standard spec. And that uh, removes the need for fitting an alternator. Not that I was ever going to do that anyway, but uh, this has been great, uh, discovering this, finding out about these. That has been fantastic for me. So it means I can keep all the wiring etc intact because you know when I find when I come across cars and people have hacked around with the wiring it really is a nightmare I really hate seeing it because vehicle wiring is uh, one of those things which are best left uh, completely untouched unless unless there is an actual fault but when people start hacking around with the wiring uh, it, it, it really is appalling. So the next step for me will be just to finish preparing this base. I will remove this uh, contact post. I'm going to drill uh, a hole here and insert a grommet and those wires can then pass through the round to the back. Uh, I'm going to secure them to the terminals. I'll put a, a ring crimp on each one and that's how they'll be secured to these terminals. Uh, and then it will be more or less ready to fit. So yeah, I am uh, very much looking forward to that, getting it up and running, nice winter project. And I shall just end uh, with today, I opened a fortune cookie and this was the message contained within. All your hard work will soon pay off, fortuitous indeed, and we shall indeed uh, see whether that is the case. So thanks for joining me, and I hope you have the good fortune to join me the next time when I'm going to fit this and reassemble it all. <laughs>